Father God, we want to thank you and praise you for tonight, Lord. We're going to thank, thank you, Lord God, for the blessing in this day. And we ask, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you get the electricity at my home straightened out and online again. And help us get this equipment around here working properly. And we sure appreciate you, Lord, for all you've done for us. We ask, Father, if you would please, in the name of Jesus, bless our fellowship here tonight. May we be a blessing to one another. May we give honor to you and help us to study to show ourselves approved unto you. We're men and women who need not to be ashamed. We pray for Mark, who's not with us tonight. And for John, we ask you to touch these men of the bodies. In their bodies, we uh, pray for James and uh, Hector that they would get their uh, uh, implants soon, uh, their, their uh, out of the liver, and ask you just have your way in their lives uh, to help to be encouraged tonight. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Well, it was a little crazy. Uh, this is, right now is the third time the last 24 hours since the power has gone out of my house. What? It went out last night about 10 15, came on at 1 46. Then uh, it went off again about 10 minutes later mm. and come back on at 3 30 this morning. Mm. And then this afternoon, about 1 30, it went off and they predicted it would be off till 9 30. So, uh, I can imagine uh, how warm my apartment is right now. But there are a lot of places that are hotter and that I don't want to go. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, at least it's always working because they said 9.30 would be back on again. So, there you go. Yeah. 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 Well, the first time they estimated when it come on, uh, they got it. They needed one more minute than what they estimated. Wow. So, praise the Lord, anyhow. Uh, we want to talk tonight about uh, the body of Christ. We've been talking about the body of Christ, that we are the church, and we're the ecclesia. And the ecclesia uh, is used in two ways in the New Testament. It's used for the universal body of Christ, and it's used for the local congregation as well. They're both referred to as ecclesia. So, uh, when you're reading it, you have to uh, consider the context that the word is being used in, and it's both, it's, no matter where it is, it's translated in this church. So, uh, two words are crucial, as we see in our outline, as we study the body of Christ, the church. One is thing is unity, and uh, you really can't do what the Lord would have us to do if we don't have unity in the church. I think that's one of the things that uh, the enemy does. He sneaks in and he tries to split the, the local congregation. Uh, I became pastor of a certain church. And when I got there, uh, it had just split. And they split over a couple different things. One of them was the color of the new cushions for the pews. They couldn't agree on some stupid little thing. People got angry with one another and took sides as bad as the Democrats and the Republicans. And uh, so unity, we need it in our homes. We talked last week about the husband and wife and, and the marriage and how uh, unless uh, this, the whole family is in unity, uh, you're going to have what we call dysfunctional family. Likewise, in the local congregation, if we uh, are not in unity, then we will be dysfunctional. We won't be able to agree on anything that we do. So, then, uh, diversity. And I think we have a diverse group tonight, uh, and we're, we're thankful for that. And uh, the church is made up of people, we talked about how we're made up from all races, ethnicities, and languages and uh, everything else that makes us different than other people. But the thing is that we have one thing in common, 
and that is the blood of Jesus Christ, which is cleanses from all unrighteousness. Now, uh, I'm going to ask you to uh, read some verses for us tonight. And know that as our outline says, our unity is built upon Christ breaking down the wall of separation. Someone be forced, please, Ephesians 2.14. And those folks at home uh, watching on TV, on the internet, uh, get your Bible out. And so we're going to read a lot of scripture tonight. And uh, so we begin with Ephesians 2.14. First person to get it, uh, just speak out here. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross. He broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. That's how you that. Amen. So uh, he broke down the wall that has separated us. You know, uh, it's nice when you have more than one bedroom, if you have more than one kid. But you can send one to one room and one to the other, and they'll be separated. Okay. Yeah. Kids, then, uh, but uh, we cannot be separated in a doctrine, or faith, or theology. We must be on the same line, on the same boat. So when he broke down the, the wall that come between us, and that wall that uh, originally came between us and the Lord was sin. And so he's broken down the wall of the partition or separation. And it's a terrible thing for the church uh, to be divided. Uh, I don't know, uh, again, I don't know if you ever, you and Moses have had that situation where you come into a church as the pastors, you found a divided congregation or are not. No, I'm shaking your head. No, that's good. You're blessed. You don't know how blessed you are. Uh, I pastored one church where it was divided in three groups. Uh, the pastor's daughter, college-age daughter, uh, was pregnant by the son of the pastor of another church. And so uh, she stood before the congregation and she repented. This all happened before I got there. And uh, some of the folks said, well, we need to forgive her, but she's repented. Others said, well, how can we forgive that? And others said, if you don't forgive that, we don't forgive you. All right, all right. And uh, I could get each of those factions together to pray, but I could not, them, not get any two of them of the factions together to pray. Needless to say, uh, things end up chaotic. And uh, we were just young in our ministry, and we walked into that situation, and the Lord showed us that we just had to love, just love the pieces. Yeah. So uh, now we have our church is built, or our unity is built upon the oneness in the body of Christ. There in Ephesians chapter 2 again, someone read verse 15. By abolishing in his flight hostility, which is the law composed with commandments expressed in ordinances, so that in, him, in himself he might make the two one in person, in this way, establishing peace. What was the last? Establishing? It says establishing peace. Peace, and then that's what you have as a consequence of unity. You have peace. And you know, uh, People come into the church as visitors, they can tell if there's something wrong. If they're walking anywhere with the Lord like they should, and they come into a congregation, they say, hmm, there's something wrong here. I don't think I want to come back. So we need to pray that uh, people would uh, get the, what do they call them, the good vibes. The good vibes for our congregation. So it's, it's, but it's a doctrine that we find unity in. So we need to rightly divide the word of truth. You know, and uh, you know, the Bible needs a specific verse that says they will know that you have love one for another. 
So that comes through the Holy Spirit. So there's your divide. Mm-hmm. There's your letter of chaos. It's the middle. That would spot the um, Holy Spirit in you. And they'll want to be a part of that. And that's so cool. So it's not an artificial contrived vibe. vibe. Uh, it's a spirit. Spirit should be inspired. And it's the spirit. It's the kind of Bible that refers to it. It's, um, you'll know. Uh, they'll know. They'll know. My disciples will be recognized by their love and their love. So, very simple. Um, if that word for could also be translated in English as to, not T W O, but T O. So we have love to one another. You know, I don't have any time if someone has hugged you around the neck and said, Oh, I love you. And then they went around the corner back and they don't really love you. But it's when we actually show love one to another. Uh, from God is love, the Bible says. Amen. Again, our unity is built upon our common citizenship, common family, and common, common future destination. Uh, Ephesians 2.19. Would somebody read that for us, please? Ephesians 2.19. But then he no more strangers to then you are all over the citizens with the saints to go to the household of God. Amen. Hey, no more strangers. Is there a Bible in here? I'm sorry. For Spanish or English? English. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll go get your one. Thank you. So. The Living Translation says, So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. So, uh, you know, citizenship is important. We know we've got to struggle down at the border. Hi, come on in, guys. Hey, guys. My That's fine. Okay. Here, I'll move you over to the top. You're fine. You want to sit there? Yeah, I'm coming down. Lisa, would you pass it on that one? Oh, okay, but not all of this. Yeah, that's too. Help yourself. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to eat at all. You can have some if you want. Thank you. Oh, bless you. Oh, Lord. Charity outreach. Well, we're glad both your ladies are with us on that. And those cookies. Okay. This is your daughter. Yeah. And your names are uh, Alyssa and Christina. I just came from um City College. I was swimming, so that's why I look all. <laughs> oh. and yeah. So we had our swim test today. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> so well, I look. That's why I look all crazy. <laughs> We're talking about the church, yes. and that there are the Greek word that is translated in English as church. It means two different things. It means the overall body of Christ, the universal uh, church, and then it also means the local congregation. And uh, the things we're talking about, the unity and the diversity, we're talking about. It has to be both places. Not only in the universe church, so that church or their first church of Pogum, uh, we need to be at on good terms with those folks as long as they're proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we can have fellowship with them. Uh, there are certain, uh, we'll call them denominations, that think they're the only ones going to make it in heaven. Well, I can do this for you. Good news for you. You may not like it, but oh, I'm going to be there. Yeah, because of my relationship to Jesus Christ. So I can read it. You ready? Pardon? What's your name again? Jim. Jim. I can read it when when you're ready. Ephesians two nineteen. Okay, with that we're going to go to. Uh, we have uh, equal standing. We, did we read Ephesians? I got lost. So he, he oh, she said read two. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, 
and to know that this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. <laughs> so, uh, there's a little thing that was uh, written in our book, and uh, I'd like to read it to you. Uh, this says, we are olive-skinned, curly-haired, blue-eyed and black. We come from boarding schools and ghettos, mansions and shacks. We wear turbans, we wear robes. We like tamales, <laughs> we have rice. We have convictions and opinions, and to agree would be nice. But we don't. Still we try, and this much we know, just better inside with each other than outside living alone. Mm. Uh, a lot of people, I've talked to a lot of people and I've had neighbors uh, that they can quote the Bible uh, and they can surely tell you what you're doing wrong. And, but they never go to church, they never had a fellowship with anybody. And I'm uh, really not sure what they believe. And uh, they're good people, but you never knew what they believed, so I was kind of uh, concerned uh, for that. And uh, if somebody in the community needed help, they were right there. But you never know where they really stood with the Lord. Now, I understand the key of Khrushchev. He was a premier of Russia way back when, when I was a teenager. And he could go to Scripture. And this gentleman from uh, over here, I was going to say Puerto Rico. That's not right. Cuba. Yeah, Cuba. I uh, understand that Fidel Castro knew Bible right and left, but he was involved with some very nasty things that I make you wonder if he even knew for truth, any truth of the scripture or not. You wonder where they walk. No, my Bible says that. Uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, which means they're, they're, they're changed, their life has changed. I was witnessing to a guy one day, and he said, well, you know, uh, 20 some years ago, I prayed that prayer, and I didn't see no change yet. Well, let's see, uh, the change comes when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. And uh, my son Billy here, he could tell you that uh, when it was time for Valentine's to buy my wife a Valentine, I would spend over an hour in the Hallmark store <laughs> until I found one that said what I felt. Matter of fact, they didn't like to go with me on Valentine shopping. It took too long. But when my wife got that card, she knew the sentiment was actually filtered through my heart. And same thing, we can pray a, a, what we call a sinner's prayer, actually say a sinner's prayer. And the thing is, that's all we're, that's all we're doing is saying it. That's one thing. But as we have to believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, there's no other way. I mean, that's what the Bible said. And not only about you, I'm not going to argue with it because of uh, uh, my Lord's been in business for a long time and been in soul saving business and he knows what he's doing and so we need to uh, trust in him so we have to have uh, this uh, unique, uniqueness and everyone has a unique now a few weeks ago uh, the folks that were here we shared our testimonies and we're surprised what we heard everybody say about what yesterday was like and what it's like now in their lives. We never know what the other person's going through. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, uh, or where they've been and what they went through to bring them where they are right now in the world. So, uh, we have constant. They may have to suffer because they're not the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 
we need to acknowledge the Lord or we got problems. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, how do I handle a disagreement with a fellow believer? Now, Proverbs 16, 18. Would someone read that for us, please? 16, 18 or 16, 28? 28. Oh, excuse me, 16, 28. Thank you. I don't know what that word is. Pro word? Proverbs. Huh? Proverbs. Oh, Proverbs. But in a verb. Yeah. Proverbs 16, 28. God separates the best. The word you're seeing is pro word. You guys are reading your phones. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what we do nowadays. <laughs> okay. Somebody want to read it for us? Okay. Sorry, we did it. God separates the best of friends. Amen. And the best of family. God separates the best of friends. Because Satan don't play fair. He 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 likes to separate family by all means necessary. He don't play fair. He don't play by God's rules. No, he doesn't. He's a liar. He's written his own book. And doing it his way. And then he's written several books. Anyhow. But uh so I'm so sorry. I can remember I had uh, some friends oh, about 15 years ago that uh, there are two friends and I, and we were talking, and my one friend says to the third guy, he says, so-and-so said such and such about you. And, uh, and what he did, he called Sardin for the guy he was telling because someone was talking about him. You know, uh, when we hear somebody gossiping, we don't need to further the gossip. Yeah. Yeah. We need to pray about it and say, hey, wait a minute. And I've heard had people gossip without me. As a matter of fact, one time when we lived in Red Love, tell you how gossip got around, we had a young evangelist who was spending, his name was Steve Spartan, he was spending two weeks with us every night and preaching and having a good time. And uh, He's a pretty good sized guy, and um, he probably weighed about 310, 320. And he slipped and he hurt his ankle. Well, I knew that over in the attic of the church, we had a pair of crutches. So I mentioned, my wife, hey, don't we have that pair of crutches over in the attic of the church? She says, Yeah, I'll go get them. So she, she come to the church and she had them on her arm like this, sticking out. And she walked. Well, the first thing you know, our phone would start ringing. And what happened? Sister Snyder broke her leg. She's on crutches. Well, you can tell it like it is. But gossip doesn't do good. And we, I don't know if you ever played that game of gossip. We start at one end and say something, and everybody passes it on, and by the time it gets over here, it's a different story altogether. Mm-hmm. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Telephone. Oh. What'd you call it? Telephone. Telephone. Well, I was told the best way to get news around town is telephone, telegraph, and I won't say that because I'm not going to fight with it. It's amazing. Okay. So then there's the right way uh, to deal with a, a problem. If you have a problem with somebody, let's go to uh, Matthew 18, 15 to 17. 18, 15 to 17. It's right there in your book, if you have a book. It's an Bible. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again, so that everything you say may be confirmed by the two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, 
treat that person as a paragon, a, par a pagan, or a corrupt tax collector. I like that too. He was until he talked to the Jesus and he got things right. And the but, modern translation should say IRS agent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you go to a person if they're not willing to, to hear you in reason? You still do it. You're not responsible for the results. You're That's just right. responsible for the, for the yeah. process. Mm -hmm. You handle it the correct way to get here. Right? Yes, That's right. So I take I take a believer with me or call him. Oh sure. Call the person. And yeah, always oh, have the, the fellow believers with you. Can you right. And the important thing is to do love. And you pray about it first. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. And so um, I do it in love. But that's the key. Just work right. And so, um, so it's just one there. And, uh, so uh, if, if they didn't want to, the thing is, you take the sour believer with you, you have to witness as to what you said. So that person you yeah. have the problems with, they can't say, well, that he said or she said, because you, you've got your witness. Thank right? you. So, so that's, that's really important. Okay. Yeah, another way to look at it is if you do it your own way, you're on your own. Oh, if yeah. you do it God's way, right. then you're compliant with what he says and you'll you're you'll get the best result that could be coming that. Now obviously part of that is the other person. Mm -hmm. If they're totally uh, not uh, doing their part with God's will, you will never conciliation. But exactly. at least you've done your exactly. part. So it's always it's always best to do it God's way. Mm -hmm. Always. Because even if it fails, at least you get it God's way and not your own. And then so it what it begins with is us having the right attitude that we go to them. Yeah. So that's uh we can minister to them. Then it says uh, take two or three, take one or two others with you and go back again. So that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If that person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Now, that's been interpreted various ways. Some would say, insert the word church leadership in there, so take it to the elders. And uh, so then we add then an extra uh, layer in there. I, I remember a uh, couple years ago, that somebody had off with the problems with the pastor, uh, not me, another pastor. Uh -huh. And uh, so the pastor tried to get together with this person. Uh, they wouldn't listen to anybody. Uh, and he got extra witness to go and then the way to listen. And I took him, went before the elders of the church and he still wouldn't listen. So then the pastor had to come to the congregation and say, well, brother so-and-so, blah, 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 whatever it was. He and his family are not with us anymore because they have a problem with their church. He wouldn't gospel what the problem is. He did not. He just said they have a problem, and so we can always do is pray for them and love them. And you know, when, you, when you have a problem with a person like that, one thing you need to do is you need to leave an open door. So they can come back into fellowship with you. You right. don't just cast them off. That's right. That's right. You have to. You don't just write them off. No, you don't write them off. You give them an opportunity to repent, and it might be four years down the road where they can come. Uh, my oldest daughter went to a wedding over in Orange Cove, and at that wedding, there was her nemesis from when she was in high school. <laughs> And they would get into this altercation, is my understanding. Anyhow, uh, the girl approached her, gave her a big hug around the neck, told her how much she loved her and how much she appreciated her. It's because of you. I'm a Christian today. Oh. And what it was is my daughter's attitude. Hmm. Way back then. Yeah. Uh, this is what won her won over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so we have to confront them, and we have to give them room to repent right. and come back. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how many years it was, probably 
15 or 20 years later. The girl come and hugged her on her neck and told her how she loved her and my daughter about planted. <laughs> that was the last thing she expected. So she knew what it was like the last time they had seen each other. But it's the same way with the people in the church. We have to give them room. We have to give our kids and our grandkids room to repent, room to get it right, room to come to you and say, hey, I'm sorry. And I, I can remember I had a, a problem with a guy, and I, I was really upset. And someone said, well, you got to go and apologize to that guy. I said, oh, I don't know. I really argued with myself. And finally, one day, I was over my mat, and I went to him, and I apologized. And first thing that he, he said, I was worried out of his mouth, like, no, brother, you were right. I was wrong. And, ex and he apologized. So uh, we became good friends after that. So uh, you never know what the result is going to be. And as uh, Daniel said a minute ago, we're not responsible for what the result is. Our responsibility is to be obedient, follow the example, the commandments of the Word of God, and go from there. And if others are willing to accept what God's Word says, that's all that. That reminds me, Brother Jim, when we plant the seed and the Lord will fertilize it. Yeah. And I always say the Lord will heal my relationships with my loved ones. Even if I'm going on the glory, the Lord will still heal our relationships. Amen. I just got to love them unconditional. Even if I have to put distance from myself, just love them unconditional through prayer. And let go and let God. And it's easier said than done, but it's possible. I can do all things yeah. with Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. I can testify that it's easier said than done. And maybe some of you can also. Okay. So, moving on. Let's look at Matthew verses, chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. May I read it? Yes, you may. Okay, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift in the front of the altar. Go first go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Amen. No. This is I can't wait to hear the answer. been interpreted in various ways. People, you know, people always give up their first application to scripture, even if it's wrong. Of course, you don't know anything funny about that. You guys are always right on. <laughs> and uh, so, but uh, sometimes uh, we need to just hang in there, knowing that we done it right. What does it mean to go to the altar and and um and leave your gift there? Does that mean your request of well, what your well at the altar? altar. That was, it was a part of the Jewish tradition. Yeah. Then it said you went and uh, you uh, gave an offering, the sin offering, the peace offering, the, all these things, and so forth. And one thing that Jesus taught over and over was, I'm not interested in um, uh, material things, or in a sense, I'm not interested in, uh, uh, maybe it's a term you use, gestures or something. He said, I'm more interested in mercy. Yes, so in other words, people were concerned about themselves and doing atonement for their own sin and whether they gave the tithe, and whether they did this, and whether they did that, at the altar, it's all about themselves, I'm saying, before you even get there, step back, what about the other guy? Get your heart right with the other guy, and then come to God, come to me, and make your offering to me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's pretty hollow. We don't, we don't have that tradition here so much, uh, because we no longer have a uh, uh, 
blood of the bull and mm -hmm. all those sacrifices. Mm -hmm. um, and even in the modern church, we use a lot of digital stuff for offerings. <laughs> but the idea is the same, that your offering is not going to be enough if your heart's not right. And so wow. it's taking this moment, like a specific moment in time, they had to do it at certain events of the year that had passed over and at certain feasts, they had to do these offerings. And he's saying, before you get there, make, you know, it's more important that uh, you're reconciled with your friend, your neighbor, your brother, your father, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and otherwise, you'll just procrastinate forever. Mm -hmm. But in the Jewish tradition, they had specific times of the year that they had to go to the altar to leave their offering. So oh, I needed to hear that. Right. Yeah. And scripture says it's obedience is better than sacrifice. So uh, it's better for us to be obedient. So what the word of God says, you know, he doesn't need your sacrifice. Yeah. He owns a cattle on the mountain hills, my Bible said, they will dwell in every mountain. But Jesus did the ultimate sacrifice. He yeah. Did. yeah. Exactly. There's no sacrifice. So, yeah. so uh, you know, it, I heard someone say, it's easier to die for the Lord than it is to live for him. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what again? You die for the Lord, it's over with. You go first. <laughs> if you're living for the Lord, you got to struggle from day to day. And and uh, with some of the characters I've met in my life, it is a real struggle. Yeah, you got to deal with personalities. <laughs> yeah. No, you say everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Yeah. Yeah. We all want to sing songs about right. going to heaven. But... Right. <laughs> and they get sick. Oh no. <laughs> Don't kill me, I'm ready. Okay, we're going to move on to, uh, I'll read this one, this alone. one. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 17. Again, I want to encourage the folks that are home, they're going to watch this tomorrow, probably on the uh, YouTube, that uh, get your Bible out and follow along with us. How do you watch it on YouTube or anything? We, the church has a channel. Yeah. Yeah, we like that channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, First Corinthians chapter 12, 14 through 17 says, Now, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Mm -hmm. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? You know, uh, a lot of people talk about denominations and... Uh, I don't believe you should church hop. I think you have to find yourself a church home and settle down and be there. But uh, some people, you know, they do this church hopping, and they don't, and others are very self centered, and they think that their church is the only one in town, and that's not true. And so we need to bear in mind that the other churches, for example, uh, the Lutheran Church has made a contribution to the body of Christ. And I don't believe all of some of the things they teach, especially about communion. I, I don't believe it. But that's all right. They don't believe what I believe either. The thing is, they have given pageantry to the church. Worcester Gospel Church, a lot of the Psalms. The choruses that we sing come around the whole bit across the church and the mission fields that are there. And uh, it's amazing. We have uh, Jack Aper just written so much beautiful music that uh, we worship and praise the Lord with. And then we have Majesty. That's a beautiful song that Jack Aper wrote. And Majesty, worship is Majesty. 
and that's all part of the big uh, oratorio. And uh, they could inspire about 200 people come to the church I attended, and they sang that for us one Sunday night. It was beautiful. So, but each church, uh, Oa and the Southern Baptists, they contribute evangelism. That's one of the strong uh, things about the Southern Baptist Church. And our pastor's proof of that. He, he, he's an evangelist. All due respect to your husband. He's an evangelism crazy. Yeah. I say that very respectfully. Yeah. yeah. And excited you know, about he it. He loves sitting out there on the, the first, the third Thursday, uh, first third Saturday of every month and greeting every car that comes through in it. And so many words is, do you know Jesus? He, he witnesses to every car that comes through. And sometimes it slows the line down a little bit, but he's going to get his message in there. So and you can tell him I said he's a pension is crazy. It's all right. My sister. I know, I know she's our spy. She can tell all about it. <laughs> My sister is on the street, you know that. And she came through. And it's I know it's like there's no way she's coming, but she said, you know what? When I do the church, I'm going to that church because that man that talked to me, he said something that got to me. And now I want to at least, I don't want you guys to think if I go, I have to be like you guys. I want to go and see and just hear him. Oh, you know, yeah. that's, that's a miracle in itself. I don't know. Amen. 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 He's very powerful. I'll Amen. tell you, he's got, he's in the right place. <laughs> right job. Amen. Amen. I was going to see if I could remember about that. But it was saying something about, like, I don't know if I got off 21. But it says there should be no division in the church. And I'm assuming, well, I know it's true, but there should be no division in family, in homes either. That's right. Well, now, to be honest with you. Because just like the, the elbow needs the kneecap, and the kneecap needs the elbow in the church, and so is it with the family. So I think I'm, I'm quite sure it hurts. Christ when when we fight with one another in homes or anywhere else. Yeah. Because that's not practicing Christ's laws when we yeah. when we act like the world. Yeah. Well well we are going to have differences even with our families. I mean he, I, I was told if you have two people in a room you have a chance for an argument. Right, right, right. Usually, yeah, one person. <laughs> <laughs> I must have been arguing with myself at times. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, you know, it's unique. Uh, you need to have peace in our family. Matter of fact, people need to treat their spouses, for example, the husbands, need to treat their wives with the same respect that they do with any other woman in the church. Mm. Come on. Yeah. And vice versa, every woman should treat her husband with the same respect that she does with the other men in the church. After all, Daniel, that's not only your wife, she's your sister. She's my favorite one. <laughs> and uh, I have a brother, my brother Dean. I call him my cousin. Yeah, I call Dean, my brother Dean, and I love my brother because uh, he's not only my brother in the flesh, but in the spirit as well. So he's my double brother. But we need to teach, treat our significant others the same as we would somebody of the same gender, and he loved them. Person, the church is the same gender. Can I can I get up my soapbox once again and take advantage of this opportunity? Um, if you know, can I say no? <laughs> if you know me long matter. enough, you know that I hound and I hound and I hound, especially in the church. We're all direct descendants of Noah. If you believe the Bible, you have to believe Noah. And there were only eight people that got off that ark. So every one of us are cousins. It might be, instead of second, third, fourth cousin, it's like 1,444th cousin. But we're all 
Cousins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we're, we're closer because we're Vikings. Yeah. But so we Our might, Swedish. yeah, we might be 1300. So <laughs> you and I are, well, it's kind of funny because we were Ramirez, mm-hmm. the uh, Spanish lady. We found out that we're uh, cousins. We're related to each other by marriage. Mm-hmm. So we always call each other. I'm Swedish. She's uh, from, her ancestors are from Mexico. We, and uh, we found out that it, in Fresno County, through marriage, we're cousins. So anyway, long story short, my soul box is this. <laughs> if, you, if you always go back to Noah, everybody in Fresno, if you walk down the road or whatever, that is your cousin. Whether they dress like you, they talk like you, they no matter what. Same color as you. Exactly. And, and that brings up the second part of my soapbox. I always start with what race was Noah? Human. The human race. There's only one race. And in fact, we did not get the terminology of race into the English language until the 1800s. So prior to that, English speaking people in the world did not even use the word race. The Bible never mentions race. But well, why is Mexico, China, Africa, all these? And you see the majority of what each race is. Well, there's a the same race, ethnicity. Oh. And it's common ancestors, it's common diet, it's common uh, uh, environment, place that you live. Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. One of the reasons in America that we're not allowed to marry brother and sister is genetic. And the reason is, is because the closer you are in bloodline, that your weaknesses in your DNA are magnified in your uh, offspring that you have. Your strengths are also magnified. So that's why when you start to have what we would call incest, but when you start to have that, you start to get abnormalities. The jawline changes and all this kind of stuff. Mm. All right? Well, forget the other sister part of that. Second cousin, third cousin, their strengths magnify, their weaknesses magnify. So all of a sudden, a hundred generations later, the descendants, Noah's descendants, which is it's commonly thought of as uh, Shem, his son Shem, went to the east of Israel, which we would call China or Asia, and settled there. And so through marriage and uh, uh, and so forth, what we would consider Asian features were magnified on a biological level. Ham went south to Africa. And so through that genetic pool, those features were magnified and strengthened and so forth. But they all have the same ancestor, which is Noah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so when you think of it from that standpoint, the other part that is, is really neat is your DNA, your DNA, my DNA only ever came from Noah. In Noah and his wife was every possible combination of DNA, physical feature, and so forth that we see on the earth today. Is that wild? Mm-hmm. And that's only for those, I mean, I, I'm, I'm being facetious here. That's only for those that believe the Bible is true. Because if you don't believe the Bible is true, you're going to fall for every right. stupid story out there. You're going to believe that, you know, um, the guy that was on the uh, reader. Yeah, well, in that and um, in today's society, we believe in evolution and all that. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as that. If, if we, we are all descended from one, and it was by design. God made a decision with Noah and said, there's wickedness on the earth. You're the only pure ones that heaven uh, that are different than the rest. I won't get into that, but, you know, today they would call them space aliens and all that stuff. <laughs> Forget all that nonsense. <laughs> Noah was righteous, and his family was righteous in God's eyes. And he put them on the ark. Everybody else died in the flood. No exception. Therefore, by default, we're all cousins. 
for all descendants. So if Noah had a family reunion out in Kearney Park, <laughs> we would all run into each other because we were all direct descendants of Noah. So Noah is our I'm home. done with my soapbox. But you get the idea? <laughs> and as Christians, you need to get that in your head and you need to get that in your tongue. There's no such thing as race because the minute you start talking race, you start to divide me from my cousin. And I love my cousin too much. I'm not going to let you divide me because there's no such thing as race. We both know we're descendants of Noah and don't get in my family. See what I mean? <laughs> don't start trouble in my family. So anyway, end of so far. Oh, well, and the other thing too, when you think in terms of language, talk about the Tower of Babel and how he got to change everybody's languages because they were all working to build that tower mm -hmm. and so because they were working in unity to do something against what god wanted he changed their languages and scattered them yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and there's different theories for that say that one more time that's in genesis 11. no say it one more time but that was really valuable so the people began to build a tower trying to reach heaven god didn't want them to do that so because they were being obedient disobedient to him so he changed their languages and he also scattered them. So if you want to read us in Genesis chapter 11. Yeah. He's the All right. Wow. So one, one, just one, one day they came to work to build the tower and they all spoke the same language mm -hmm. as descendants of Noah. Wow. God gave them different languages. They came and one guy's battling, grab me a brick, and the other guy's saying, <laughs> What? Yeah, it's true. I don't understand what you're saying. And so both people groups did. Got the different dialects and different languages, left the Tower of Abel Amen. And, and, Amen. Uh, and, uh, and scattered across the known world at that time. And then we're part of that too. Obviously, that's the English Abel. We're going to get back to our book. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is good. We need to talk these things out and get them out there. Okay. Pardon? Okay. Sounds <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Not> good. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it's talking here the verse of the Corinthians how that every part of the body is essential. What if we were all engineers? Oh, how about this one, Daniel? So what? So, Suppose everybody liked the same thing in a woman that you like. <laughs> that would cause a problem. That's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> be a lot of cookies. <laughs> 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 See, the one that made two days now. Eat, eat, eat. And so, that we, like we, do have, <laughs> we do have diversity in the church. It's not only uh, with gifts, but it's it's just people. Well, that's what Lila said. She said, you know, there's the knee, the eye, the elbow. We're not all the same. No. But without the elbow, there'll be no sense out of your wrist. Okay, so uh, uh, let me read this thing out of here. I didn't put it on your handout. It says, uh, diversion means that instead of expecting me to be exactly like every other Christian, God's real joy is when I express the unique gifts that he has given me. One of my favorite stories about this is the parable of a rabbit on the swim team. <laughs> this brings back some memories. Once upon a time, the animals decided they would, should do something meaningful to meet the problems of the new world. So they organized a the school. They adopted a curriculum of running, climbing, swimming, and flying. To make it easier to administer the curriculum, all the animals took all of the subjects. <laughs> the duck was excellent in swimming, in fact, better than its instructor. He made only passing grades in flying, however, and was very poor in running. Since he was slow in running, he had to drop swimming and stay after school to practice running. This, <laughs> this caused his left feet to be badly sworn, so that he was only average at swimming. But average was quite acceptable, 
So nobody worried about that except the dumb. The rabbit started at the top of his class at running, but developed a nervous switch in his leg muscles, causing so much makeup work in swimming. The squirrel, the squirrel was excellent at climbing, but he encountered constant frustration in flying class because his teacher, this and this, made him start from the ground up instead of from the treetop down. He developed Charlie horses from overexertion and only got to see in climbing and a deep running. The eagle was a problem child and was severely disciplined for being a nonconformist. In climbing classes, he beat all the others to the top of the tree but insisted on using his own way to get there. Mm. So it's unity with diversity that makes the church of body. So we have all these different gifts that we bring to the church. Uh, Jesse's a, a great musician. He and his wife, they help us with the worship. You know, not everybody can be a worship leader. You know, I was told that uh, Ricky Nelson couldn't carry a tune in a bucket because his bucket had a hole in it. <laughs> now, if anybody catches that, means you're almost as old as I am. <laughs> uh, you know, so the thing is, uh, what if we all did the same thing? Everybody was a teacher. That means there'd be no students. <laughs> and what if, what if everybody made cookies? Where would the ice cream be? Aww. But in the church, in the body of Christ, it's the same thing. We need each other. Like I said, Jack Paper written, uh, wrote Majesty, beautiful. Then we know Handel's Messiah, all this beautiful music. A guy down named Amy Sapp, only person, wrote all kinds of sacred operas, some of which I got to sing in when I could sing, I can't sing anymore. But the thing is, we each need to say, all right, Lord, what is my gift to the church? What can I do to make our church better? What gift, what ministry can I do? Now, my son here and I, we know a woman that would always come over our house and say, Pray the Lord give me a ministry. And I've served this with some of you before. But she had a ministry. She drove senior citizens to their doctor's appointment. Or she'd get out her push mower and mow the lawns for them. She did things for the seniors, helped them go grocery shopping. That was a ministry. Amen. And not everybody can do that. But everybody can do something. Yeah. Everybody can do something. And so we need to discover what is that something. Even in our personal families, each, is, each of us has something that we can do to make our family function better. Whether it's uh, we're out in the kitchen cooking the best cookies, making the best cookies in town. Or we're on Christmas, we're making the best tamales. Or Somebody's really good at cleaning house. Amen. And, and some people enjoy that. They enjoy making the house look big and fat and comfortable for the rest of the family. That's, I think that's how both women become homemakers because that was one of the things that women used to do all by themselves, not men help them. And every woman said amen. It's like a really serious crucial question. Like, um, Recently, I have a loved one, my brother. All my family loves me in their own way, but my brother is really fighting me, yelling teeth. And I try to, you know, I have 10 siblings. And I, and I try to, well, I have to try, I, I am the light to, to, to my own offspring and to my siblings. But for whatever reason, my brother, he don't see that He's trying to attack my my personhood, my spiritual life, and I refuse to 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 give Satan a foothold or to um, uh, to have strong, to have uh, good boundaries and to not uh, be.
be conformed to the world. So what can I do when a person like that is attacking my spiritual life? It's, I mean, he, he, you would think a person will be grateful that you have a spiritual person or a spiritual leader in the family, but for whatever reason, maybe he's letting Satan uh, trick him to think that he's doing something big. Well, you know, a lot of people have problems with what other people do. For example, some women really say, oh, that Susie or Thelma, she can't sew. I can sew better than that. Or, hey, some man, guy might say, well, I'm, I'm a better mechanic than so and so. And it's because they're self centered. And usually it's because they realize that they can't do it as well as the other person. So they're putting the other person down. Exactly. And so the same way in our walk, you know, there are a lot of people wish they had what we have, but their pride is holding them back. And they don't want to do the footwork to draw close to Christ like we are and do the discipline to be intimate with him and talk to him and listen to him and, and study the word. Right. So they let me ask you this. Do you have any kids? Four. Okay. When they were like two and three years old, did they ever say, I hate you mom? Oh no. No? Oh no. Only once. <laughs> oh no. But they anyway, might they might have asked why they did when they were grown, but no. <laughs> they didn't I mean, say it. I say that because usually when they're little kids, they'll say something. To be mean. Oh, they may well, really or, mean. Or they're front there because they oh, didn't get their way. Okay. Or they've taken nap time or something. Can you just ignore it right. because you realize it's a two-year-old? Well, oh. if, if somebody who's not walking with the Lord or just started walking with the Lord said that to you, even if they're 45 years old, 